Today I'll demonstrate how to con uh, do continuous archiving with OLG and point in time recovery with QD minus post database. So let's first take a look at our table of content. First, I'm going to talk about the continuous archiving and point in time recovery. And after that, I'm going to talk about the base backup options that keep the supports right now. So right now we're actually planning to support two types of base backup. One is with OLG base backup and another is volume snapshot. After that, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the continuous archiving and restoring. Then we're going to have the question answering session. So let's uh, just start with the point in time recovery and archiving. So nowadays, uh, if we talk about the backup and recovery status, it's absolutely key to maintain any critical database. So point in time uh, like recovery is the ability to restart a database cluster to a certain point in time. <laughs> so what could be the best use cases for point in time uh, recovery? So first of all, uh, let's talk about the site failure. So like you have any trouble with your site, then you want to recover your database to point in time, uh, like in a certain point of time. And there could be other thing for device failure. So uh, like uh, uh, something bad happened, uh, which can actually damage your hard drives. So you have, you have lost all your data. And also it could be like something could, could be like data corruption. Uh, like your Postgres database has been corrupted. This could be happened with some bad input or some other stuffs. Uh, uh, now let's uh, go to the next slide. So here you can see that we have a good image uh, about explaining the point in time recovery. So let's initially assume that we don't have the continuous archiving uh, uh, feature for our database cluster. Like we don't have the wall uh, archiving for our database. We only have the base backup features with some clone job or clone depth. With this kind of recovery, we can actually, uh, like if the, any kind of disaster happened, we can still recover, but we're going to lose some data. So let me just explain my work, like how are we going to lose some data? Let's assume, uh, like in this image, the last successful base backup was uh, 0 03, and uh, the 0 04 has been failed. The base backup 0 04 has been failed. So, if we want to recover with base backup only, then we're going to recover uh, till the base backup 0 03, right? And we're going to lose all the data which is actually written after this base backup 0 03. So, that's the problem, right? If we want to have all the data, uh, till the disaster point, we can't actually recover with, on, with only the base backup. Now, if we have the continuous archiving, then we are actually uh, putting all our wall after this ba base, uh, like base backup into some uh, storage options. So further, if we have this disaster scenario happen, then we can actually recover till this point, right? So that's where actually point in time uh, actually comes handy for us. Now, uh, let's talk about the uh, base backup option in our uh, QDB, uh, like QDB features. So we have actually two options, uh, like OLG base backup, uh, which, where we're actually going to use OLG with our database cluster. And another base backup option is actually the CSI snapshot app, where we're going to use a feature from our Kubernetes external CSI snapshot app, which is actually going to take our uh, database PVC snapshots. Uh, now let's go for the demo. So in our demo, we're going to actually create a demo uh, like a demo PG for our Postgres uh, archiving, and we are going to restore from this Postgres uh, like uh, archiving to other uh, restore uh, PG. So let's first take uh, take a look at our PQ site. So for this demo, we uh, need some uh, kind of uh, like stuff that uh, for our uh, demo. So first, we need to have a CSI stuff shorter controller. So for this snapshot controller, uh, we need to uh, deploy these three CRDs first for this volume snapshot contents and volume snapshots and volume, volume snapshot classes. And after that, from this documentation, we can actually uh, uh, deploy our volume, uh, CSI snapshot controller. Now we need a CSI driver which supports volume snapshot. Uh, for our demo, we have actually used Longhorn. Uh, uh, Longhorn, uh, who is actually uh, have uh, which have the CSI driver which actually support the uh, volume snapshot features. 
but uh, most cases, uh, the cloud providers uh, by default sub, uh, says that they have a support this volume is not short. Uh, so we don't need to uh, have this uh, uh, third party says that driver for us. We can actually have, uh, for example, if you talk about uh, AWS uh, case cluster or about GP cluster, there are there are CSA driver by default support this snapshot operations. So we don't need to have another third party CSA driver in that case. Then we are going to install our QDB, uh, QDB, our own QDB, which is actually going to uh, do all the other other operations for our demo, uh, like demo. Then, if we talk about our YML that we are going to deploy, first we need to take a look at our uh, the backup uh, demo PG YML. So here you can see that we have mentioned this uh, API version, which is QDB.com beyond alpha two. Then the kind is actually post case and the metadata. Uh, and demo demo PG and namespace demo. We're actually creating all the all our stuffs in a demo, a namespace demo. And after that, we have this spec where we actually mentioned the version. We're actually using 13.6 uh, Bullseye image for our like uh, Bullseye version uh, for our this demo. And we're actually going to have this in standalone mode. So we have replicas one, and the standby mode is hot, and the storage type variable, and the, here is other the storage, storage spec. And after that, we have this dimension policy wipeout. And uh, the main thing about our uh, feature, like our uh, this webinar is the archival uh, spec. You can see that in archival spec, we have option enable wall backup. So uh, that's actually said true. So that's mean that we want to archive our wall continuously. If we set it to false, then we're not going to archive our uh, wall com uh, continuously. So we are going to do some stuff like just to base, just a, just the base backup one. And then after that, we have actually the spec for base backup storage, where we actually mentioned the prefix, where we actually going to store our data and the storage ref, where we actually have the credential of our S3 bucket. And another uh, spec is full backup, where we actually mentioned the base backup options, like how frequently we want to be uh, uh, like deploy our base backup. And also we have this CSI driver options, like driver options where we have put CSI snapshotter. As I've already mentioned, we're actually supporting two kinds of uh, like base backup. One is with CSI snapshotter and other is with the wall gene. So we have mentioned this driver CSI snapshotter here as we are going to deploy our uh, demo PG with CSI snapshotter driver. And after that, uh, we need to actually mention this CSI snapshotter spec for us where we need to uh, like mention the volume snapshot class name. This is kind of important for us, uh, where we actually provide the driver name in the, in, in the volume snapshot class. So we have actually mentioned the volume snapshot class name here. So for our, uh, de before deploying this one, we need to first uh, take a look at our, uh, this snapshot class and this storage ref. So first we need to actually create this volume snapshot class and our storage secret credentials. So let's just first create this. Uh, uh, let's take a look at this YML first. So here you can see that we have this volume instruction class YML, where we have uh, kind declared as volume instruction class, and the API version is snapshot storage status IOV1. And after that, we have mentioned the meta metadata where we have put the name, same as our class name. You can see that Longhorn is snapshot VST. And uh, here is the name is same. And we have the driver driver.longhorn.io. This is kind of important. As I have already mentioned that we're actually using third party uh, CSI driver uh, for our uh, this demo to take this stuff source. So we're actually going to mention this driver name uh, as the longhorns. Then we have the relation policy and the parameters uh, for our snapshot is snap. Yeah. And after that, we have this uh, storage secret uh, where we actually mention all the cred uh, credentials for our, for our S3 bucket. So like uh, this is kind of pretty much uh, all we need for our demo PG YML. So let's uh, deploy this uh, demo PG YML here. Uh, we have actually already uh, created this volume search class and secret for ourselves. So we can uh, we're actually ready to go with this uh, demo PG uh, demo YML. But let's do one thing here. Uh, like we have actually schedule uh, like uh, change the schedule to one so that we don't need to uh, wait long time. Uh, to run the clone job. So let's just apply this one. You can see that it has been created actually and the database state is provisioning and uh, the status is actually uh, pinned, uh, the pod is pending right now. It's in init status right now. 
let's just wait for this uh, uh, DB to DB, DB to be ready. And after it is going to be ready uh, from our controller, one of like one console is going to be created, which is going to actually handle all those uh, like uh, full backup options that enable uh, in our cluster. So let's just wait for this uh, cluster to be ready. It's, a, it's still in provisioning instead. And the ports is now running now. So I think uh, it is going to be ready. So you can see that the state is actually ready. And also the console has been created for our full volume snapshots, like the base backups. And let's just wait for a few seconds to like uh, here, like act, um, get the action done by this one job. You can see that uh, a port has been actually uh, started here. So let's uh, let's now do one thing here, like. Uh, just pause this uh, 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 this backup option back because we don't need uh, any more. Like we have already have one for our uh, demo. So we can use this one for our demo. So let's just pause this one right now here. And you can see that uh, Clone Job has been suspended also. So it's not going to create any job for us right now. Now let's do one thing. We can actually write some data in our database. So let's just either need a port uh, demo page zero. And let's just write some data here. Uh, create a database called test. And let's now connect with this test, test database. Now we're going to actually uh, create a table uh, called uh, uh, employee. But we have going to have three rows, like uh, the primary key, then the name and the email. Now let's just put some uh, random data here uh, called uh, like insert into YML. And uh, it has been actually inserted. So let's just put another one. Now let's do, just do one thing here. Like, uh, if we if we just uh, take a look at our <laughs> Linux storage, so here you can see that uh, the wall has been already written. Like the one wall has been already written. Now let's just uh, uh, do one thing here. Like uh, switch the wall first and check if the new wall is still going to be written or not. So I'm going to do this, uh, do this by manually. So I'm going to run this select uh, PG Swiss wall command. So it has been actually switched right now. Now let's just take the S3 bucket if it has been pushed or not. So you can see that the new wall has been actually in, in this S3 bucket. So what happened here is like, you can, if you notice that we're actually running two container here, right? Uh, one is actually for Postgres and the other one is actually going to we do this archiving archiving container, which is actually going to put this all this uh, like wall file to the S3 bucket. And also in the meantime, if we take a look at the volume star short, like if we just get the volume star shorts, uh, sorry. Then you can see that this one job, the backup job has actually successfully created this volume star short, which is actually ready to use true, right? So you can use this, uh, volume snapshot for our uh, uh, like restore process. But before that, let's just create a register scenario here. So like we are going to drop this table in uh, like fully, then we're actually going to restore till the point before the dro dropping the table from our restore uh, process cluster. So for this reason, we need to have the time till which we are going to restore. So here we're actually going to save this time for our part, uh, like future uh, use to restore this till this point. So let me just uh, this here. And after that, we can do one thing here is like we can drop this table. So let's just drop the uh, table employee. And if we just check, then you can see that there is no relation. That means that we don't have any table right now because we have already dropped it. Now let's do uh, again the PG switch wall so that this wall this wall file also 
I'm going to be uploaded in S3 bucket. So let's just run this visual, visual command. And let's now check uh, our S3 bucket. So if we check our S3 bucket, you can see that this 03 wall has been already up, uh, like uploaded inside our S3 bucket. Now uh, we are done with our backup archiving. Now let's just go with the like go for the restore process. So here we have this restore YML. So here you can see that the API version is pd.com v1 alpha 2 and the uh, kind is post case and all the other stuff are the same except the archive recovery option. In our backup one, we have actually mentioned this archive bar because we want to archive uh, ar archive our walls uh, or the backups uh, for this uh, uh, the, uh, the backup YML. But in digital YML, we're actually going to restore uh, our all our backups inside this uh, restore uh, uh, PG. So let's just explain this archive recovery options. Like you, we have this PITR options. Here we can actually mention this target time. So as uh, it, it, in our previous uh, like uh, commands, we have actually get the select now command where we actually get the time. So we're actually going to use this time, like put this time here to recover till that point. And after that, we're going to mention the data source name, like the snapshot name. Like you have, you have already uh, like get the snapshots here. You can see that the demo page, uh, this one. This one is going to be like our, uh, the uh, this one is going to be our uh, snapshot name. And if we talk about the repository ref, it is going, it's going to be the same for our Walzy credentials, where we actually have stored our Walzy credentials. So now let's just uh, deploy this one. So here is our uh, restore YML. Before deploying this one, we need to actually change this uh, snapshot name and the target time. So let's just change this target time and snapshot. So we are going to uh, pick this target time. And we are going to set the target time here. And also we're going to uh, copy this snapshot name. Like, uh, let's just, uh, you can see that the volunteer name is here, the demo PG one. So let's just put this demo PG uh, snapshot name here. Now we are ready to actually deploy this restore while mode. So let's just, Deploy this list to YML. So now you can see that the restore PG actually is in provision instead, and also a job has been created for this restore PG. So this job is actually going to uh, like recover all our stuffs, like our wall files, and also to take the volume stuff source. And uh, where this actually going to return us the database with this point in time. So it's in init state. Let us wait for this one to be completed. So it's in it's still uh, it's now in running state. So let's just wait for this one to be like uh, complete here. <clears throat> it will take some time because it's going to like uh, pull all the wall and also the stuff. It's going to rate the second one. Okay, it has been actually completed. So. Uh, I think the uh, uh, DB has been successfully restored. Now it's our controller jobs to run the uh, restored PG uh, port for us to uh, give us the uh, Postgres, uh, like give us the Postgres port. So it's actually in, in it instead and also the DB is in position instead. So let's just wait for this status to be ready. So it's, it's still in uh, like provisioning state. Okay, so the pod is actually running now. Let's just wait for this status to be ready. So it's now ready now. So let's just check if we, our data is actually, uh, we have actually, actually correctly uh, have the our data or not. So let's just uh, inject into our restore PG port and run the PSQL command. And 
first let's uh, like get the all the database that actually currently we have now in our install PG. So here you can see that we have this uh, like this test database uh, that we have actually inside our demo PG. Now let's uh, uh, try to get the like connect with the database. Now we are in uh, we are connect, connect with our database test. Now let's just get the table tab, all the tables here. So you can see that our table is actually here. Though we have dropped inside our this uh, dropped this table inside our demo PG, it is actually now inside our uh, register PG. So we can say that we have actually successfully point in time uh, do do, a, do 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 the point in time recovery. Let's just uh, uh, get the all the data from this uh, table from uh, employee. So here you can see that uh, like we have all those uh, rows uh, who so have actually dropped inside this database. So you can say that successfully we have actually do done this point to point in the recovery for our database uh, in register PG. So uh, that's all from my side. Like if, if you have any question, you guys can ask ask me later. So Antor, can you uh, take over from this uh, from there here? Uh, thank you, Iman. There have no question in our comments box. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website, busytapschool.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day. Thank you.